low Mr. 13 here with a Spore UFO Spotlight. And I'm not the maker of any of these creations. The names of those who made them are right beneath the names of the creations. And this video is purely for entertainment and possibly a slight educational value. And unlike what I did with the military vehicles in my past vehicle spotlights, I'm pretty much just going to wing it here and end up showing just what a Star Trek nerd I actually am. So let's start off here. This is the original series Enterprise. First captained by a certain Captain Pike in the pilot episode, The Cage. And then after that, captained by Captain Kirk. Played by William Shatner. And this is a Constitution class ship. And survived the entire, I believe, three years of the original series. And then carried on into the motion pictures. Up until, I believe, Star Trek III. Um, that is either... Wrath of Khan or Search for Spock. Not sure. I want to. Th I want to think that Kirk was forced to sacrifice the ship to defeat Khan, and that would be Star Trek II. But at any rate, they carried it through the the whole TV series and then on into the movies. And next, I want to jump over to this one. This is the ship that. Uh, was known as the original M Enterprise in the 2009 movie, which could be known as Star Trek VI. And it's, it's supposed to re represent the exact same ship, a Constitution-class vessel, but it's, uh, it's obviously different looking. And I think most of the choices they made in, in changing it... Uh, are purely stylistic to give it a futuristic look and make it flashy, make it look fast, that sort of thing, just for the sake of the movie. But in all regards, it's it's basically just the Enterprise from a different timeline, still captained by first um, Captain Spock and then by Captain Kirk. Now, here we have what is the... USS Enterprise NCC-1701A. And this is a Constitution class refit. So basically they took the original ship um, from the original series, uh, either took, took that same ship or took the same design. And um, for one thing, they changed the warp pylons back here to a... a at the time more modern design but for the most part the ship looks the same and it was first featured at the very end of Star Trek 4 the voyage home um, to Star Trek 4 uh, the heroes Captain Kirk, Captain Spock, Scotty, all of them um, had to use a bird of prey to travel back in time and by the time they saved the world and returned to their modern era, to the future, I guess, um, this is the ship that they had uh, finished building and uh, took the moniker of Enterprise. And then uh, carried on in service up until... See, I think it was the final movie featuring the original cast, which would have been The Undiscovered Country, Star Trek uh, 6 or 7, not sure. Okay, and then we move on to the Enterprise B. So, again, NCC 1701B. This is an Excelsior class, and... The Excelsior was a 
starship of its own and was the first of its class. And then the Enterprise here was built um, after um, the last Enterprise was destroyed, as is the trend with this series. Um, and they just used the Excelsior design and therefore that's the Excelsior class. And it says up here, um, Excelsior class battle cruiser after refit. So it must have some differences from the actual Excelsior itself, which was also featured in some of the movies. Um, notably, I remember it in um, the Undiscovered Country, the the final um, movie with the entire original cast. But this one. Uh, was first seen in Star Trek Generations, which is the first Star Trek movie to feature the Star Trek The Next Generation's cast. And it's at the very beginning of that movie. Now here we have uh, something of an oddity. This is the Enterprise C. And basically this uh, fills the gap in ship design between the B that I just shown and then the Enterprise D which is used in Star Trek The Next Generation and it was featured only one time in a Next Generation episode and it had a female captain it says up here uh, Captain Rachel Garrett and it's an ambassador class cruiser now this ship in um, a heroic stand defended a Klingon battle station or outpost against Romulans and that helped lead to peace between the Federation and the Klingon Empire so it although um, in terms of uh, TV and movies it has practically no uh, appearance it played a role in the history of the Star Trek universe and then on to the very famous Enterprise D captained by Jean-Luc Picard played by Patrick Stewart and the Enterprise D is a galaxy class and um, survived through all of the Next Generation episodes, which I believe is seven seasons, and made it to Star Trek Generations, where it was uh, it met, a, met its end. Um, it was cap capable of separating into a saucer section and a main battle section. And the saucer section is not capable of warp speeds, and it's mainly to evacuate the civilian um, population of the ship, and then allow the main engine section to be uh, battle ready. And I think it was only used like two times, maybe in the very first pilot episode. And then again in Star Trek Generations, where it was destroyed. And the next ship is the Enterprise E. So after Star Trek Generations, uh, having destroyed the Enterprise D, the Enterprise E took its place. And it's a Sovereign class starship. First featured in Star Trek First Contact. That's uh, the Star Trek movie where they uh, fight the Borg. I believe there's some time travel involved. And I think it's a pretty impressive looking ship. And I do believe there's actually even a S Enterprise F. But for all I could do, I couldn't find a... Um, model of that on the Spore website. So it's about as up to date as I was able to do with the 
Enterprise ships. But we can next move on to the USS Defiant and Star Trek Generations and the success of seven seasons led to the beginning of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And although the majority of the show took place on the space station, Deep Space Nine, uh, Commander Benjamin Sisko, played by Avery Brooks, um, did uh, actually command this ship as, as captain. And it's, it's actually one of my favorites. Um, I'll probably end up using it in my Spore game, um, as I did last time I played. I just like the overall design of the ship. Um, nothing too fancy. And... Uh, it it just has something about it that I like, I guess. And this, of course, like I've said before, this is the best um, model of it I was able to find. Next is the Voyager, which is an Intrepid class Federation ship, captained by... Janeway, Captain Catherine Janeway, and um, for any fans of the Star Trek series, uh, Voyager was lost on the other side of the galaxy, and the arc of the storyline for the whole show was the Voyager trying to get back home to Federation space. And um, it's a very formidable ship, not the size of the Enterprise D or others, but uh, featured many advances in technology. Um, and as over the course of the show, they um, integrated different technologies that they ran across. And lastly, for this episode, I want to feature something of a throwback. The Enterprise NX-01. And this is from the show Star Trek Enterprise. And it's mainly a prequel series. And the captain of this ship was Captain Jonathan Archer. And um, basically, although not having anything near the registration numbers using NX-01 instead of the NCC-1701, it did, um, it did have its role in history being the first ship named Enterprise. And... Um, took me quite a while before I'd watched any of the episodes, but I got quite addicted to the series. It's very interesting. And the overall ship design, again, is, is quite cool. One of those that I like the design quite a bit. So that'll conclude my Star Trek UFO Spore Spotlight. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again. And until next time, take care.